Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Jason's Bedtime Storytime. Welcome, boys and girls. Today's story is a very, very famous story. It's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs and the Evil Queen. It's from the Brothers Grimm. So this is going to be my adaptation of this particular story. So it won't be verbatim. I'm not sure what that word means. I may look it up one day. It just sounds good. I feel rather intelligent when I say it. So uh, it says here, I'm going to read the, it's out uh as it, I don't know what the right word is, but I want to read it out as it, as it is actually written, just this little bit. It says, uh, This is a vintage fairy tale and may contain violence. We would encourage parents to read beforehand if your child is sensitive to such themes. In other words... Uh, I guess I really should, you know, before uh, you play this to your children, if, you know, if you're an adult and you've got children and you're wanting to listen before you play it to your children, just make sure that your children enjoy violence. Right, okay. So here we go. Once upon a time, in the middle of winter, when the flakes of snow were falling like feathers and dandruff and other white materials squirting from the clouds and a queen sat looking through the window of her palace which had a frame. The window had a window. It's a window. It's got a frame. I don't know why we're pointing that out. All windows have window frames. That's what they're called, window frames. Um, and apparently, yeah, she, apparently she was stitching her husband's shirts. She's a queen. Why is she doing that? Why is she stitching a shirt for her husband if she's a queen? Surely she'd have people to do that, maids, or at the very least, be able to afford to go to, you know, a dry cleaners and get it done. Hmm? Or buy a new shirt. Anyway, so while she was, uh, you know, having a little bit of stitching here and there, a bit of stitching, looking out at the snow, as you do, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I... I love the snow. I do. I love the snow. I, I love the snow. And sometimes there's nothing I enjoy more than looking out of the window hoping it's going to snow. But unfortunately it rarely does. But, you know. Um, but when it does snow, oh, it's lovely. I really thoroughly enjoy it. It gives me a, a feeling that I only get uh, when it snows, it's lovely. So, uh, just like myself, Queenie here, she's uh, distracted by the snow, thinking, wow, that's a lot of snow. It's really lovely. Maybe I'll make a snowman. And uh, she kind of lost concentration a little bit. And she, she ended up with, uh, she with a prick. In in her hand. And she looked down. And she saw that she'd pricked her hand with the, with the uh, the nittle, the you know the sewing, sewing needle. That's why she had a prick in her hand. And, it was bleeding. And I was like, oh. 
and uh, she she went outside because she 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 didn't go outside, but she well she did go outside. Yeah, she went outside for the sake of the story. She went outside and thinking, you know, because her hand felt very warm. So she went outside and the blood was dripping onto the onto the the snow. And she looked and she saw the blood falling onto the snow. And she thought to herself, Oh, this looks really nice. I like the colour of the, the blood on the snow. Which to me seems like quite a strange thing to really think about. I mean, I'd be thinking, ow, 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 my hand hurts. Uh, I'm going to bleed to death, but not her. She's like, oh, what a lovely pattern in the snow my blood makes. So she was a bit of a weirdo, to be fair, I think we can say. And uh, she basically looking at the at the floor with the blood on the floor and she says thought to herself oh that i had a child as white as this snow as red as this blood and as black as the wood of this frame i've got no idea what that means um but anyway let's just see what happens soon afterwards a little daughter came to her who was as white as snow, with cheeks as red as blood, and with hair black, black hair. And she named her Snow White. And at the same time, her mother died. So, a lot happened in a very short time there, didn't it? So she she ends up with, she has a prick in her hand, goes outside, notices that ooh all that blood dropping on the floor onto the snow. That's nice. That looks lovely. God, I wonder what it'd be like if I had a little child uh, with white skin and pink cheeks and black hair. Soon afterwards, she had a child with pink cheeks and black skin and white hair, and suddenly she's uh, she's dead. So a lot happened very quickly. About a year afterwards, the king married another wife. He waited a year. The truth is, he waited three weeks, but we don't we don't go into that. He always had a little thing for uh, for her sister. There you go. And he married another wife who was very beautiful, but so proud and haughty that she could not bear for anyone to be more attractive than she was. She wanted to be the most beautiful lady in the world. And... I don't know what the word haughty means. So there you go. And she, apparently she owned this really groovy mirror. Like a really, really, like proper groovy mirror, man. Like a really gnarly. And um, when she stepped before it, she talked to it. Because she was crazy. And she talked to the mirror and the mirror would answer her which is uh, not a good sign. Uh, it's a sign that maybe you need to change your meds. Um, anyway, she says, she's standing in front of the mirror, and she says, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of us all? And as I said, she had a beautiful voice to match her Beautiful body and a beautiful face. Now the mirror actually replied. It said, uh, 
the queen is the fairest of the day. And she was proper pleased, like proper, proper pleased. The queen was so happy. Um, and she knew, she knew that the mirror was being honest with her. She knew that that was a, an honest all day long mirror. Very happy. She was very, very happy. Almost moist. Um, so, little Snow White, at this point, talk about moist, little Snow White, however, grew up, like most people do, and became prettier and prettier. And when she was seven years old, a little bit worried how this, where this is going now, uh, she was as fair as the noonday. Does anyone know what a noonday is? I mean, is it fair? Is it a beautiful thing? I don't know. But anyway, she was very, very beautiful, apparently, and more beautiful than the queen herself. Which, you know, doesn't look good for the queen because the queen does not like competition. So, there's this, let's get this into perspective. A seven-year-old little girl living, I mean, isn't she living with her, isn't she? So, she knows her. Bring It's a stepmom. So, you know, she knows about her. She'd be aware of her existence, I'm sure. I mean, they might live in a big palace, but it can't be that big that you wouldn't even know that you, you know, have a stepdaughter. Anyway, the queen again gets in front of her groovy mirror. Um, I think this time she had a cup of tea first um, and maybe a cup of digestive biscuits. Not necessarily relevant to the story, but I just think it makes it more homely by telling you these things. Again, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest of us all? The mirror replied. The queen was fairest yesterday. Snow White is the fairest now, they say. <laughs> So this answer, you know, the mirror answering in this manner, didn't go down so well with the queen. She was not best pleased. In fact, she became very angry. Very, 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 very angry. She tapped one of her feet on the floor with rage. A rage never seen before or since. And from that moment, whenever she saw her stepdaughter, Snow White, her heart was hardened against her. And she hated the little girl. She <laughs> hated that little girl. And her envy and jealousy increased. So she could never sleep at night. She couldn't relax during the day. She was so uptight and angry and upset that she was being outbeautied by a little seven-year-old girl. Which kind of gives you an idea of the mental capacity of this queen to be jealous of a seven-year-old girl. But hey, there you go. Um, oh, it's starting to go dark now. Okay, here we go. Uh, so she called a huntsman. She's cause they used to have huntsmen back then. Uh, he had an axe. Uh, I guess he had a permit. And he used to have a little tent that he'd carry around with him. But unfortunately, his fingers were like sausages. So 
he couldn't pack the tent away so he literally just dragged a tent that was already like inflated just one of those ones that pop up you know, out of the bag but he couldn't put it couldn't put it back in the bag but who can eh? who can we shouldn't judge him for that so sausage fingers huntsman said um she said she's called him in to her bed chambers you know where she slept and where she had the mirror and he said uh your Majesty, your Majesty, uh, hello. And uh, she, she said, "Come in, come into my bed room." And he said, "Your voice, your voice keeps changing, Your Majesty." Yeah, I know, I know. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. He said, oh, how, how, "How can I help you, Your Majesty? How can I help you? How, how, how can I help you, Your Majesty?" And uh, she said, uh, "You need, you, you know, uh, you know Snow White, that little girl that runs around and stuff, runs around the palace." Yeah, yeah, so I, I've seen, I've seen a little girl in, in the past, your, your majesty, mm, yes, 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 I, 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 I have, mm, I, yes, mm. Well, uh, I'd like you to take the child away into the forest. So that I never have to look at her face again. Because I'm so angry. I will. Yes, what would you what do? What would you have me do with with the girl, uh, Your Majesty? You must kill her and bring me her heart and tongue for a token. What do you mean for a token? I mean, I understand the heart and killing her and, uh, you know, her tongue and I, you know, I'm just something I do quite regularly. And what do you mean for a token? Doesn't matter. Just do what I say and you shall be rewarded grandly. Oh, okay then. Okay, Your Majesty. Uh, by the way, a lovely mirror, a lovely mirror that you have there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the huntsman took off. Um, he, he didn't really grasp what he was about to do until, you know, he, he kid, kidnapped her, obviously. He kidnapped uh, Snow White. Uh, well, he didn't really kidnap He he got her into the forest under false pretenses. He he told her that he was going to take her to Disney World, and uh, she she sort of was excited because she heard that. Uh, well, she's heard that she was quite famous there, and that's quite a good joke, isn't it? Um, uh, so she said, uh, you know, the the huntsman, he drew out his knife, he, he didn't actually draw the knife, he didn't have like a pad and paper, he, he got his knife, he was about to, you know, kill her, so are you asleep yet, are you nice, no, no, not yet, okay, I'll carry on the lovely story then, so he got his knife, he was about to kill uh, mm. uh, Snow White, and she began to cry, saying, Ah, oh, dear huntsman, give me my life. I will run into the wild forest and never come home again. Please, let me go. Please. I really want to one day go to the pictures and see a movie with my boyfriend when I'm an adult, when I'm about ten. Oh, please let me go, Mr. Huntsman, Mr. Sausage Fingers. Uh, the 
huntsman said, Oh dear, oh, stop crying. And uh, the huntsman, it softened his heart. And her beauty so touched him. The beauty of a seven-year-old little girl so touched him that he had pity on her and he said, well, 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 run, run away then, you, you little child. Run, 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 run. And he thought to himself, you know, you run, 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 but you'll soon be eaten by all the wolves anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'll still get paid. <laughs> um, anyway, still, he felt as if a stone had been lifted from his heart because... Her death was not at his hands. You know, he hadn't done the deed, as it were. Just at that moment, a little bear came roaring towards him. And as soon as he clapped his eyes upon the huntsman's sausage fingers... The huntsman caught it, killed it, and took its tongue and heart out and carried it to the queen for to get his token or to give her her token. He wasn't sure. Because he figured that a big, large bear's heart and tongue would be exactly the same as that little seven-year-old girl's. As you would, I guess, if you were that dumb. But now, poor little Snow White. She was left motherless. Although, to be fair, I don't think the Queen seemed like the best mother figure in the world. Just, just an observation. And she was alone. She was overcome with grief. She was very upset, basically. Um, and she was a bit overcome, a bit over, overwhelmed by the forest. There's just so many little animals and trees and holes and branches and twigs and all that stuff. And she just did not know where to go. Does she go right? Does she go left? Does she go straight? Does she go back? Do you want to go back? Does she go, you know, she didn't know. Could she go up? No. Should she go down? Not yet. Um, so she said she ran and ran and ran. She just, just, just randomly ran until her feet could go no further. So the rest of her body just carried on, left her feet there. Go on without me. No, that didn't happen. Mind you, it fits in with the story, really, doesn't it? It's all made up. So basically, it started to get darker, and she was a little bit scared. She was lost, you know, it's standard, and she saw a little house nearby and she entered the house. She just walked in. It was a bit rude, but I guess if you're born in a palace, you're not really going to know the social do's and don'ts of the poor folk, are you? So she just walked into the house. I guess she probably thought it was a, a I don't know, just like a cupboard or something. Somewhere where she kept her shoes. It's a lot smaller than where I keep my shoes. But, you know, she might have. I'm, I'm just adding this attitude upon her. She might not be like that at all. And she just walked in. It was a lovely little house. It was a little cottage. Everything was very small. Now, we're talking about a seven-year-old little girl here. So... She would kind of want everything to be small, wouldn't she? But anyway, everything was very small, but very 
very tidy, all in its place, everything in its place, you know. And in the middle of the cottage, there was a table. And there was seven little plates upon it. And each plate had a spoon and a knife and a fork. Just, you know, it's just a table with cutlery and stuff. And there was also seven little cups. Now, against the other side of the wall, there were seven little beds, all in a row, covered with white sheets. Now, little Snow White, being both hungry and thirsty, had a little bit to eat, a little bit of porridge out of each plate. Yeah, the plates had food on them. That was missed out at the beginning, wasn't it? The plates had food on them, which is a bit strange. Why would you leave plates with food on, on a table? Unless the people were invisible sitting at the table actually eating the food. I mean, why would they have food on? Um, but she had a little bit, drank a drop or two of wine out of each mug or cups. She, she did not watch, she didn't want to take too much away from, from, you know, each one. So it didn't affect each individual person. So they didn't miss it. After she'd done that, she was bloated. She was fat as a pig. She was, honestly, what she really needed more than anything was burping. She needed a big burp and probably a bit of a fart just to get rid of some of that gas. And so she jumped up and down, hoping to just rid herself of some of that unwanted air inside her body. But she couldn't get rid of it, you know. So she made a little bit too much noise. Um, and then, suddenly she got very tired. And as these things happen, she, uh, she, you know, really felt tired. And she just tried each bed. Thought, oh, I'll go to sleep on that bed. No, it's not very comfortable. Went on the next bed. No, this smells moist. Went on to the next bed. Why are these sheets so hard? Went on the next bed. Why are these sheets so sticky? And then just went on each bed until she found one. And she just, just fell asleep. So... Probably about an hour later, it was dark outside and she was fast asleep. When the owners of the cottage came home. And they were seven tiny little humans. Who back in them days we could call dwarfs. Now they'd be called, I think, little people who dug for gold and silver in the mountains. That was their job. You'd feel they'd live in a bigger place, wouldn't you? I mean, it's got to be quite a well-paid job. If all seven of them are doing that. The fact is, there is a bit of different. There's a, there is a diff, uh, something in the story that we, people don't mention. There was actually only six beds. Because one of them, well, two of them did have a, a relationship. Um, so, they dug for gold and silver in the mountains. So, when they got into the, the cottage, the first thing they did was light. They lighted seven little lamps. <laughs> Not just lamps, little lamps. And saw it once... that there was something different. They saw that it was like the food had been messed with. 
I mean, surely the food had been gone off. If they'd been out all day, that porridge would have been horrible. And they, they didn't have microwaves back then. So there was, you know, it. they kind of thought, you know what? This is a bit strange. So one of them said, who's been sitting in my chair? The second one says, who's been eating off my plate? The third one says, who's been nibbling at my bread? Fourth one, who's been slurping at my porridge? The fifth, who's been meddling with my fork? And the sixth said, that's a different fairy tale, isn't it? That's Goldilocks and the Three Bears. This is just copied. It's the same scenario. And the seventh said, don't worry about it. Just Let's just move on. Let's just get on with the story. I said, oh, okay. So they started looking around. So the first one, you know, looked so... Who's been lying on my bed? He asked, because he saw the sheets were stumbled. Stumbled? Tumbled? And then another one says, Someone's been lying on our beds? But the seventh little man, um, he actually saw Snow White living, sleeping in the bed, because <laughs> he decided to use his eyes. And he called his companions. I mean, everything's in one room. It's not like they would be a mile away. Quick, you gotta come and see what's here. There's a girl in my bed. It's like three foot away. Come, oi, look. You'd notice, wouldn't you? I would. And they just got a light and they, they pointed it on her. Oh, heavens! Oh, heavens! Said one of them. What a beauty she is! Said one of the other ones who... Um, he was still wearing his tag from his last offence. Um, so they were, they were really delighted. Um, but they wouldn't wake her up. So I just left her to fall asleep, just to be asleep. She must need the sleep because, you know, you got to be pretty desperate to need to go to sleep if you break into someone's house. And, uh, you know, so I just left her and let her sleep all night, taking turns to stare. And once the morning dawned, Snow White awoke, stretched her legs not her legs, her arm. <laughs> Stretched her arms out, like in the movies. And she saw the lev seven little men staring at her. And they asked her, you know, what her name was. My name is Snow White, was her reply. Will you come into our cottage? They asked. Then she told him how her stepmother uh, would have had her killed, but the huntsman had spared her life. And, you know, she basically ran away and uh, she came across the cottage by accident. When the tale was finished, the dwarf said, Will you look after our household, be our cook, make the beds, wash, sew and knit for us, and keep everything in neat order? If so, we will keep you here, and you shall want for nothing. Uh, Snow White answered, No thanks. I don't want to be your slave. I'm a lady, and I live in a palace. You are below me. <laughs> no, she didn't. She, she said, Yes, with all my heart and will. I'd love to clean and stuff like that 
It's, it would fill my heart's ambitions. And so she remained with them, kept their house in order. Uh, in the mornings, the dwarfs went to the mountains searching for silver and gold. And when they got home, f they got home to a freshly made dinner, you know, made by uh, Snowy. And during the day, she was left alone just to do what she wanted to do. Just to hang out, watch daytime telly, you know. Um, the kind of stuff that a lot of uh, mothers do, you know, sort of watching TV and just... <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> the dwarf said to her one day, Be careful of your stepmother. Who will soon know of you being here? So let no one enter the cottage. Now, the queen, in the meantime, supposing that she had uh, eaten the heart and the tongue of her stepmother. She ate the heart. What? She ate the heart and the tongue of that bear, thinking it was her stepdaughter. Grim. And she believed that she was now above all the most beautiful woman in the world. And on a random day, she stood in front of a mirror. I can't believe it's I imagine she did it every day quite a few times. But she, you know, in front of a groovy mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? And it replied, The queen was fairest yesterday. Snow White is fairest now, they say. The dwarfs protected her from thy sway. Amid the forest, far away. Now, this reply surprised her. She was not happy. But she knew the mirror spoke the truth. She, you know, she, she had an agreement with the mirror. Don't, don't lie to me. And I'll let you watch me undress. You know, just stand stuff. And she knew, therefore, that the huntsman had lied to her. And that Snow White was still alive. She was deceived by old sausage fingers. So this is what she did next. The evil stepmother dyed her face and her clothes. And she made herself look like a... Like um, a vacuum... Door-to-door -door vacuum cleaner seller. Uh, so that no one would recognise her. And in this disguise she went over the seven hills to the house of the seven dwarfs. Coincidence? Mm. She knocked at the door of the cottage and she called out. Fine goods for sale. Beautiful goods for sale. Now Snow White peeped out the window and said, Good day, my good woman. What have you to sell? Fine goods, beautiful goods, she replied. Stays of all colour. But what's a stay, may I ask? I don't know, but it's in the script. So just, just go with it, okay? Just, just play along. Okay, then. And she held up a pair of uh, many-coloured silks, apparently. I may let it, this honest woman, thought Snow White. And she unbolted the door and, um, you know, haggled. To get a decent price for these 
uh, tights or I don't know whatever they were. Who knows? In, in, I don't know. Perhaps it was an encyclopedia. I don't know. Whatever it was. And she said, well, yeah. And they haggled down a, g a good price. So the old woman said to her, You can't think, my dear, how they become you. Come. Let me lace them up for you. Now Snow White, pretty much just quite naive, she said, Okay then. Um, so, you know, she did this and she was lacing up so quickly and she just like a corset or something, but with quite a tight neck. And she did it so tight um, that... Snow White fell down like she was dead. Now, thought the old woman to herself, um, running away. Now I am once more the most beautiful of them all. At evening, in the evening, not long after she left the, the old uh, Seven Dwarfs' cottage, they get home, they're very, very shocked to see their little, uh, little worker, um, you know, their little, little girl who cooks their dinners and stuff, just lying there, not moving as if she was dead. So they raised her up, or they picked her up basically, it took seven of them. I'll just point out she's quite a heavy girl, quite heavy set, which is fine. Um, not great for emergency situations, but you know, she. Anyway, they they picked her up. She was fine. She was breathing, but she, you know, she she passed out through lack of oxygen or whatever, and she was okay. And she told the, the the dwarfs what had happened, and they said, The old peddler woman was no other than your step, wicked stepmother. Take more care of yourself, and let no one enter when we are not with you. So, you know, she said, Okay, okay then. And the queen, she was at home, again in front of her mirror, beautiful, groovy mirror. Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who's the fairest of them all? And as before, the mirror replied, The queen was the fairest yesterday. Snow White is fairest now. They say, the dwarfs protect her from thy sway amid the forest, far away. As soon as it, the mirror stopped yapping on, the queen's blood rushed to her heart. She's never been so angry. To hear that Snow White was still alive. But now, she thought to herself, now I'm going to destroy her completely. So she decided this time she's going to put a poison comb. She made a poison comb and she. Um, was going to take it and see if she could sort of get the old, what's the name, uh, Snow White to, to sort of comb her hair. So, you know, that's what was her, that was her next attempt at killing her. So she waited till the, um, you know, the little dwarfs were gone. 
knocked on the door again like before and uh, she called out to Snow White Good wares to sell today. Snow White peeped out and said, You must go further, for I dare not let you in. Please go next door. I don't like her very much, so don't mind if you kill her. I just don't fancy being murdered right now, thank you. But still you may look, said the old woman, drawing out her poisoned comb and holding it up. Look, look, look. So the sight of this lovely comb pleased Snow White. So she thought, okay. I'll open the door then. It does look like a nice comb. So she opened the door and the uh, the old lady, you know, disguised queen says, uh, let me for once comb your hair properly. You've always had really straggly hair, like straw. Let me make you look beautiful. <laughs> so Snow White thought, Well, I know you did try and kill me yesterday, but yeah, okay then, all right. <laughs> So, you know, she consented, you know, she'd hardly started combing her hair when the poison began to work. And Snow White fell down on the floor unconscious. The Queen yelled out. <laughs> it's all over now. And she flew off on a little broomstick. So again, the the, the red, the seven dwarfs turned up again in the evening. Discovered the poison comb stuck in her head, and they immediately you know, took took it out. They sucked sucked out the poison out of her. Hmm. Then the maiden, the you know Snow White. She recovered, and they said, "They said, look, listen, you got a, your stepmother's been here twice now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time to learn. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they just warned her about it. Please don't open the door. Please stop opening the bloody door. Anyway, the queen." She got home, got in front of the mirror again, just like before, had the same conversation just as before. Uh, and she just, just like, what? So she, she decided, this is ridiculous. How is she still alive? So she decided this time, I'm going to give her a poison apple. So the next day, she knocked at the door. Snow White stretched out on her bed. And she saw sort of like, she, she shouted, I dare not let anyone enter. The seven dwarfs have forbidden me. This is hard on me, said the old woman, for I must take back my apples. But there is one which I will give you. Answered Snow White. No, I dare not take it. What are you afraid of? cried the old woman. There, see, I will cut the apple in half. Do you eat the red cheeks? Now I will eat the core. So she 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 had done a little bit of magic, a bit of close hand magic, a bit of card tricks and stuff in the past. So she knew how to kind of manipulate the situation so it looked like she was eating some of it and, you know. But basically, she gave the the apple to Snow White. She had a bit, ate a little bit, 
and immediately fell down dead upon the ground. The queen looked at her with uh, very happy eyes, laughing. Laughing her heart out. She really, really enjoying herself. White as snow, red as blood, black as ebony. This time the dwarfs cannot reawaken you. <laughs> then she got home in front of the mirror again. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And the mirror answered, The queen is fairest of the day. And she felt really peaceful, really chilled and relaxed. Best she'd felt in ages. So, you know, she's just there enjoying her life now. The red, the little dwarfs came home, find, uh, found Snow White lying there. Didn't know what to do. Uh, so laid her on one of the beds. And they were crying and basically they left her there for a while. Until the smell got too bad, then they decided a better bury her. But she still looked fresh and lifelike. And they weren't sure if the smell was because she was dead or just because she hadn't had a wash for a while. And uh, so they ordered a case to be made, almost like a glass coffin. So they could see both sides of her body and they, they wrote name. And basically, they put her inside it. A bit like those bottles, you know, that we that have ships in a bottle, but this it was like a seven year old girl in a bottle. And they just left her there. They put her in the in the middle of the room and they wrote on, you know, like a signature thing on there, uh, just writing on that she was the king's daughter and everything. And all the animals of the forest came to pay their respects. And for a long time, Snow White just lay there peacefully in her case. And she didn't change at all. She just, you know, just laid there. Didn't deteriorate. Didn't turn to dust. Nothing like that. But she looked as if she was asleep. But she was still white as snow. Red as blood and black haired as ebony. And as it happened, one day a king's son was travelling in the forest and came to the dwarf's house and asked if he could stay over. Um, not for like a, a pyjama party, but just, you know, he was tired and needed somewhere to stay. And they said, uh, they said, yeah. And he looked, this, this, um, this prince, he, he looked at the case with Snow White lying there. And he said, uh, can I buy it, please? He said, what do you want? What? You want to buy? You can't buy her. She's ours. You can't buy a little girl. Is there something wrong with you? Why do you want to buy a little girl for? You're a prince. And he, he said, no, I just, just, you know, no. You know, I just, I just want to buy her. And another dwarf said, we will not sell it to you for the all the gold in the world and the prince said well then just give it to me then <laughs> what just give it to me if you want to sell her give it to me give me the case with the little girl in for I cannot live without Snow White he said I will honour and protect her for as long as I live he said well when the dwarf saw that he was Really being honest, they pitied him. 
and at last gave him the case and the prince got his soldiers to come in and take it, you know, with Snow White's body inside. But as they were walking out, one of them tripped on a yo-yo. And basically they tipped over and Snow White's body fell on his so on her side. And that bit of poison apple fell out of her mouth. And she opened her eyes. She ro she raised the lid of the glass, she got him, she and she said Where am I? What am I doing in a goldfish bowl? I just had the weirdest dream. And um, full of joy, the prince answered, You are safe with me. And he told her what she'd been through, basically. And he'd rather have her than any other for his wife. And she said, but I'm only seven. <laughs> um, no, she did, that didn't come into it for some reason. Um, so basically, she said, okay, uh, we'll think about it. He took her home to his castle, where his father lived, and they got married. Now, Snow White's stepmother who was also invited to the wedding for some reason. She was getting ready to go, all dressed up, all dolled up, all nice and she clean, cleaned her bum and everything. And she said, Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of us all? And it replied, The queen was fairest yesterday. The prince's bride is now, they say. At these words, the queen was in a fury and was so terribly mortified that she knew not what to do with herself. So she decided she was not going to go to the wedding. But she could not resist the wish to see the princess. So she went. And as soon as she saw the bride, she recognized Snow White and was so terrified with rage and astonishment that she melted. And someone slipped on her. And another person said, what did you slip on? They said, oh, I slipped on that, that melted lady. She just melted. I said, oh, slippery? What's it taste like? So one of them put his finger in the mess on the floor. It tastes like syrup. So they decided just to scrape it up and pour it onto the cake, the wedding cake. So they all had a nice syrup cake. And... um. What's her name? Snow White said to her husband, This this is the loveliest cake I've ever had. I can't believe how tasty it is. What is that coating on it? That liquid is just so tasty. It's like so syrupy. And the prince said to her, Oh, that's that's your that's the remains of your melted stepmother and they all laughed and carried on eating cake and they lived happily ever after now go to sleep